My next guest is beating the market this year by investing in marquee names in real estate like Simon Property Malls, Sam Zell's Equity Residential, and Mort Zuckerman's Boston Properties. Wow, talk about marquee. That certainly qualifies. Stephen Brown manages the American Century Real Estate Fund, which has outperformed 99% of its peers this year. Steve, great to have you here on Street Smart. And who would have thought real estate was a place to uh, make a winning bet this year, especially because much of what we think of is what is happening on the residential front, but your fund is primarily non-residential real estate. That's right. It's, it's a REIT fund, and it's up about 6% year-to-date. And we invest in commercial real estate in the U.S., and the fundamentals there are pretty good. Demand is greater than supply, and that's why we've seen positive returns from many of the commercial REITs we invest in. Now, commercial property is also a big universe. That's so right. I was hoping you could kind of run through your view of the specific commercial properties that are doing very well. So are they malls? Mm -hmm. Are they strip malls? Are they big malls? Are they okay. uh, office properties? Sure. What we focused on this year is try to take advantage of the what we believe is that the top 20% of the United States is doing pretty well. So we've invested in regional malls that cater to the, the people with the above average incomes. And that would be the Simon Property Group, the Talbans, et cetera. So those properties are showing same store sales of four, five, six, seven percent, and that part of the market is doing well. Additionally, the, the coast in the United States, say the New Yorks, the Bostons, the San Francisco's have done well. So we've invested in REITs that own CBD office buildings on those coasts, like a Boston Properties. Uh, additionally, one key theme we've invested in this year is the, the appeal of rental apartments versus buying a home. Uh, rental apartments are up 6, 10, 12 percent this year, and that's due to a couple of reasons. One is the average person is, is, doesn't think buying a home is such a great idea anymore, so the propensity to buy has declined, and so more people are renting. And in addition to that, there's concerns about obtaining a mortgage, and so we've seen the, the apartment REITs raise their rents 6, 7 percent this year, but also see their occupancies go up as they're raising rents. Now, your approach, even as you explain it, the thesis behind some of these investments, is clearly very top-down. Mm -hmm. So you start with a lot of the macroeconomic analysis first. For 2012, which of these trends do you think will continue? Okay. Uh, I think as we enter the new year into 2012, what we expect is, unfortunately, a still difficult for-sale housing market in the United States. We, we can, can see uh, prices of homes in the U.S. falling maybe 6 to 7 percent in 2012 as the backlog of foreclosed homes hits the market. The banks have been holding off on foreclosing the markets because of government regulations. They've since gotten the, sort of the green light, green light to move through this, uh, this backlog. So you'll be seeing a kind of a wave of foreclosed homes hitting the market, which will cause prices to decline somewhat. Uh, secondly, with the, obviously the economic problems in Europe causing concerns globally, people will be less uh, inclined to take a risk of, of buying a home. So we think new home sales could be muted in the first half of this year meaning that rental apartments should be in a good place to be as demand remains strong, supply is limited, and they have the ability to raise rents greater than inflation. So we're pretty constructive on the apartment sector going into 2012. Are there any uh, headwinds in 2012 that, that you're particularly concerned about? Well, we would cons be concerned about, as we see here today, I think the U.S. fundamentals are actually in pretty good shape, but we expect Europe to, the, the recession in Europe, to accelerate in the first half of 2012. And, you know, that could act as a sort of a damper on investor optimism next year for a while. I think that uh, we generally expect, say, 2% to 2.5% growth in the U.S. Um, as we move later in the year, I think things will pick up. But I think uh, the situation in Europe is, is probably getting worse before it gets better. And that could create sort of a cloud on investors' uh, enthusiasm for equities in general or just any type of risk-type investments. And then on a global level, are you watching events closely in Europe and how that may impact at least investor sentiment at this point? Yes, we are. It, it has an impact on uh, investor sentiment. We also run a, a global real estate fund. But the, the European market has sort of tied up the, the U.S. equity market in the last couple of months, so it's had an impact. REITs are still up 5 or 6% year-to-date, so we're having a positive year. But I think in general, there's a concern that the U.S. economy could be negatively impacted by, a, I say, a prolonged recession in, in uh, Europe in 2012. Now, when we, when we started uh, speaking, we mentioned a series of different marquee names, such as mm -hmm. Sam Zell. As you look at some of these big name investors, do you, do you, are you really banking on their expertise and their ability in prior markets similar to this one to sort of navigate successfully through? Mm -hmm. Well, it, it depends on the company. Uh, one of our large holdings is Equity Residential, and Sam Zell is the chairman of the company. He's obviously a very astute investor, and he's active in a number of different real estate investments in addition to the apartments. 
Uh, other companies like, say, a Boston Properties or Mort Zuckerman is the chairman. That's his primary and probably his sole real estate investment vehicle. So we really benefit from his focus on that and his interest in CBD office in New York and other parts of the country. Uh, so I think many of the REITs do benefit from the, the leader's focus and their large personal investment in these companies. Uh, typically, like in Boston Properties, I would believe that uh, Mort Zuckerman probably has you know, a 10 to 20 percent ownership position in that company worth hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars. So he's very focused on the company. And for some of your positions that have performed very well, do you have a, a discipline that's in place as to when you pair back? Yes, we do have a, a daily valuation model where we look at the ideas and look at our REIT universe for what makes sense to own. Generally, though, the, the stronger, well-capitalized companies this year have done very well because, you know, we have emerged from the credit crunch in the United States, but credit is not readily available to all companies, to all real estate players. The bigger companies, like a Boston Properties, like you mentioned, or an equity residential, they have access to unsecured debt. They have, you know, sizable lines of credit. They have access to term debt from commercial banks, whereas some of those smaller REITs or some of the private players don't have access to that type of capital. So the, the larger, well-capitalized companies are really beating up the smaller ones this year. Yeah, bigger is better in markets like these. We have to end it there, Steve. Okay. Pleasure to have you on here on Street Smart.